Hi, Hubsters. So today we are going to give the final crack at Webinar Jam because uh, I want to see if it works for a change and uh, see if the tech gremlins are out of the way. So it looks like I'm live in the hub. Crack at Webinar Jam. Oh, I'm very loud in the hub. All right. Um, hi to anyone who's joined us for training Thursday and a conversation to consider. Um, please pop in the comments below if you're joining us on Facebook um, that you're here. Hey, Louise, nice to see you. So um, today I'm going to chat to you about uh, the ideal client scenario. Uh, if you haven't uh, access the download it is at www.tammyguest.com backslash ideal dash client uh, so I will pop that in the chat box right now www.tammyguest uh, let's spell my name correctly <laughs> Tammy Guest while everybody's joining us Tammy Good no, nah, let's not go with that. Tell me guest dot com backslash ideal ideal dash client client because there's been a lot of talk about this over the past couple of weeks and um yeah, I wanted to start a conversation about it. Now, there's millions of different ways of uh, coming at your marketing. There's millions of different ways of thinking about your business. But this one seems to have um, been tried and true for quite some time now in the marketing world, in the small business world. Uh, it allows people to, it, it allows you to, instead of being in this overwhelm of what am I going to tell people? Uh, who am I going to, you know, who am I going to tell? What am I going to talk about this week? What should I put on my blog post? Uh, what should I put on my website? Um, what should I do this talk on? Instead of all of that, when you have your ideal client kind of nailed, when even if you've taken just a little bit of time thinking about your ideal client, and some people call it an avatar, other people call it um, a a, you know, a muse. So it, it's essentially finding your ideal. Now, the cool thing about it is an ideal is different to I help everybody. And if you help everybody, that's nice. And that's all good and well. And um, a lot of us start out particularly as general practitioners. And um, a lot of us end up still treating lots of other people. But when it comes to your marketing and your and ha how to build your following and your small business, you'll notice some of the biggest names will work to their strengths, will work to the things that they love and are passionate about um, talking about. And it's those things that will, will bring in an ideal client, a type of client that you're going to love to work with, a type of client that you get up out of bed for and you're like, oh, look, I've, I've just checked my schedule and so-and-so's coming in today. Oh, I can't wait for having a chat with that person. I can't wait to see what they've done this um, past fortnight or this past month. You know, those types of things generate an energy, a synergy and a, and a, a kind of reciprocity that you can't get if you're not working necessarily with your ideal client. Because if you've got a whole bunch of ideal clients, then you're going to have your ideal day. And if you have your ideal day, then there's a possibility you'll have your ideal week when it comes to monetary funds. And then if that happens, you're going to have your ideal month. And then what do you know? You're going to be working with your most favorite people all the time, which is pretty cool. So uh, ideal clients create ideal situations, ideal um, consultations and then you're able to create more flow. Now the little thing that happens when we start talking about ideal clients and it sure happened to me when I first started um, exploring what an ideal client looked like, I had so much resistance to it. I was like, yeah, but I want to help everybody and I like helping everybody but I want to help mums and I want to help their kids and I'm gonna... I totally get it. Total resistance. And the cool thing about having an ideal client is it's not like you're going to cut all of them off. It's not like all of a sudden the sign comes up on the door and an alarm goes off when the wrong type of client or somebody other than your ideal client walks in the door. It doesn't work like that. 
But what it works like is if you've got a massive spotlight, so if you're in Australia and New Zealand, you'll know all about um, a dolphin torch. And a dolphin torch is a big spotlight that shines just on the thing you're looking at. So if you've ever gone spotlighting out, out um, in, in the bush, you've been able to maybe spotlight on a tawny frog mouth owl, right, And it, at night time. So you're like, yep, there's the owl. And then you'll see that the, it casts a little bit of light next to it in the rest of the tree and you might see a possum or you might see something else. And then it casts some light to the trees surrounding it. And it, although that light isn't as intense as on the Tony Frogmouth Owl, you've still got light around the outside. And, you know, you don't have light behind you necessarily and there's – but. All of this that you were seeing before, you still see, but the spotlight is on the one owl. So the interesting thing about all of that is that the same thing happens for your clients. So say, for instance, um, one of my ideal clients in the past has been a busy, burnt-out mum. And the busy, burnt-out mum kind of scenario is I, I can spotlight on her by talking essentially to her when I am writing a newsletter. When I'm writing a blog post, I can be really specific about, um, well, now that school's gone back, um, we all, we're all feeling relief. You know, that's a really specific sentence for that particular, um, that particular client. But that's not to say that a dad wouldn't read that same sentence and get something from it. So if I was spotlighting on that particular mum and I had, had a, her in my mind while I was writing that blog post, the people that are next to her, standing around next to her at, at the schoolyard, um, her friends, maybe her family, maybe her husband might get something out of that as well. Now that's not the ideal client, but it's, it's, very similar. So my marketing can still speak to her and the people that surround her. And then further out, it might still speak to grandmas. It might still speak to other people that she knows in that, in that world, but it's going to have a flavor that she and her peeps will like. And you might not attract some of the other types of um, conditions, types of people, types of non-committal people that if you were speaking this way to them, uh, they're just going to yeah, thanks, but no thanks. So we're not uh, here to serve everybody. We've got our unique gifts and talents. We've got our unique uh, experiences and ways of um, creating relationships and getting into communication. And we've got our unique healing capacities because we're actually here to help these wonderful people that are attracted to the way that we particularly do things, not the way that the person down the street does it, the way that we do it. So if we can be really truthful in our marketing and be able to help the person that we really want to help the most, then we're going to have this, cast this light around that particular person and people just like them. So um, hi, Kirsten, nice to see you. Hey, Katie, you've joined us too. Uh, let me know if this is a bit stilted on uh, Facebook because I'm happy to jump ship. I'm just giving Webinar Jam one last try. So um, the thing about, yeah, your ideal client is it, it creates a resonance to your brain. Uh, it creates a resonance to, well, let's go all woo-woo, to the universe, and it puts an order in for the types of clients that you would like to um, t like to see. And it starts to create a relationship and a rapport, which is what marketing actually is. It's just building a relationship between you and a potential client you haven't met yet. And being able to build that rapport through actually taking the time to step into somebody else's shoes. So... Again, if you haven't downloaded um, the uh, the worksheet, it's the Ideal Client Worksheet. It's at www.tamiguest backslash ideal dash client. If you pop your email in, it'll send it straight away. So um, with the Ideal Client, now the whole p point of the, this is to be able to step into somebody else's shoes. So you have to know this person um, relatively well and um, if you don't know them it's time to actually spend the time starting to get to know them 
because the more that you know uh, them, then you're going to be able to understand what's actually going to motivate them, what's going to create resistance for them, what's going to be um, the biggest driver in their life, what's going to be the biggest thing that they um can't, they can't do without the, um, the biggest hurdle for them to actually change and create a different change in their life. And, uh, you're going to see all of these different things that are going to create either the behavior of being able to come and see you in the first place, the behavior to change so that they follow, um, and are compliant with what you're, you're trying to, um, uh, help them with, with their health. Uh, and the behavior so that how, how can you help them in the long run rather than just now to get them in how can you help them in the long run so uh, your ideal client your ideal client can come from a multitude of different places but for this particular exercise for you to actually take action on this today while you're watching this or for you to take action on it this week before we do uh, training Thursday next week, um, it's time to actually take take some time. You have to like space some time out to actually step into this. And to think about your ideal client, uh, it comes from a couple of different places. Number one, often your, your ideal client, and let's just choose one for now. Uh, it, I've had, in the past, I've had probably about three at one time because I, I just love to help Adrena Fatigue and I just really love to help women's health and then I really love to help uh, kids with their food intolerances and things like that who had ADHD and behavioral changes and stuff like that. So I had three at a time. So I totally get it. But I'm not saying help the entire world. I'm saying nail it down and really start talking to some specific people rather than... Um, the whole world. The whole world's still going to come, but the people that you really, really want to help and that you're actually here with your gifts and talents to help, they're going to be a lot more attracted to you if you start speaking to them through your marketing. So uh, when it comes to your ideal client, number one, my biggest suggestion is your ideal client is very likely for about 80% of you, you about two to five years ago. Uh, a lot of practitioners get into the world of practicing because of some type of health condition themselves where they've been able to heal themselves. And um, this is a beautiful millennial, like a, a story of the millennia uh, where Chiron, uh, who was a Greek myth, uh, myth uh, the healer heal thyself. So often parts of your ideal client will be either parts of your psyche parts of your emotional journey, parts of your physical journey where you are healing those parts as well. Hey Mel, nice to see you. So um, that would be one tip I would be suggesting that often the person that you can help the most is the person that you knew two to three years ago or five years ago, whenever it happened to be, because you can step inside your own shoes from the things that you learnt from that, that far, um, you know, because you've lived it. And so if you're able to step inside those shoes, anyone who comes to you that has a similar kind of way of being, similar kind of health condition, you can quickly and easily be able to understand where they're at and what motivates them and be able to help them. So that's number one. Number two is the person that you want to help the most, you may already know or you may have already treated um, this particular person or a series of people like them. So your ideal client is the person that you were like, oh my goodness, I just had the most amazing experience treating this particular client. And if you haven't had lots of clients, then think about the people that you have helped. You are bound to have helped somebody who's a friend, who's another student that you've helped, maybe even a family member where you were just like, I am on fire. This was amazing. I had a great conversation. They learned lots and I was able to give them the, the treatment that they needed and they got a really good result. So that ideal client that you're thinking of, that ideal situation, that ideal person that you're thinking about, that might be your ideal client as well. So who's who's got somebody like that? Who's watching that has somebody that they go, oh my goodness, I remember Sally. 
Sally was just the best person to work with. She was motivated. She was enthusiastic. She was curious. She came back with information. Like I, I didn't tell her all the information. She came back with information, had questions. She was always turned up on time. She had the money to do things. And, um, you know, she had, the, she had the massive change. Like sure, it was a little bit slow at the beginning, but she learned heaps and then she was able to share it with everybody she knew. So that's my type of ideal client. What about you guys? Mel, you've got one, have you? Awesome. Who else has got an ideal client where you've just gone, oh, time just disappeared when you were talking to them and you would love like a whole books full of that person. Yeah, Louise, awesome. Yep. Um, and you've seen plenty of people, Louise, so you should definitely know the person that stands out. You know, it's a person that stands out kind of straight away. Um, yeah, and it can be really empowering for everybody involved, Mel. Totally great way of um, describing it. Um, that's the beauty of the my my opinion and my belief. It's not everybody's. Is that we are uniquely here to to bring our gifts and our talents, and bring not just our knowledge that we've that we've gained from doing our studies and all that kind of stuff, but our gifts and our talents that some of you guys are really good at listening. Some of you guys are really good at explaining things in a really amazing way um, that people understand. Some of you guys are really good at uh, feeling people's energy and um, the empathy side of things. Some of you are really good at being able to um, be forthright and, uh, you know, no bullshit with people. When you bring forth whatever your gifts and talents are, it's really empowering for you because you're in alignment with yourself and it's really empowering for the other person when they're your ideal client because they're in alignment with that kind of energy too. And when the two collide, it's an empowering situation for everybody. And if we were to all match up with our ideal clients or similar tribes of people around them, then we've got a, an amplified way of being able to help uh, everybody on the planet because we're all aligning with different peeps. So, um, yes, Mel, beautiful. Thank you for um, bringing that up. Katie, uh, me, my client was hormonal and stressed but was motivated and focused. Our consults flowed so well and I felt so pumped. Yeah. Uh, Georgina, I love treating young women with mental health conditions. There's nothing better than taking away the anxiety from someone. Oh, beautiful, Georgina. And this is the other cool thing about your ideal clients. That's fantastic, Georgina. Um, Francesca, she's also um, loves treating particular types of mental health conditions. And what you'll notice is some of you who are listening, um, it's totally cool if you're like, I can't stand treating mental health conditions. Because for me, it's a similar kind of scenario. I, um, the first networking event I went to as a NAT, um, I went and I was like, oh, I wonder, you know, it's a bit weird talking to people. It's a bit strange. But I ended up sitting next to somebody who just loved skin conditions. I can't stand treating skin conditions. It is not my thing. It takes me forever to do and um, it is just not my thing but her ideal client was so the, the the beauty of the conversation that I had with her is her ideal client is so different to my ideal client but we can help so many other people knowing the types of people that we love to help you don't have to be the same as everybody else you can love what you love because you you feel it on the inside just like Georgina's um said just then she loves taking anxiety away from someone and i know uh having run a multimodality clinic with multiple different practitioners some of our practitioners oh no keep the anxiety ones away from me not interested they're down the line they know bullshit they don't want to hear people's stories duh, 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 you know um that, that we're all different types of practitioners so we're all going to be of benefit to um different people so this is the cool gold that comes from actually um, honing in and taking some time connecting with that ideal client so you really start to notice what's useful and what might not be useful <laughs> cool uh carly uh i can't stand treating kid uh, sorry katie can't stand treating kids beautiful because who loves treating kids who's on the call that loves treating kids who's like Yes, I love kids. I've got like a whole kids section in my clinic. Most of my herbs are all kid related and all that kind of stuff because there's someone out there who does. 
And the type of conversation that you're going to have in your marketing, if you love kids, is very different to the type of conversation that Katie's going to be having with their mums. <laughs> so um, I love that. And I, I'm um, pumped to see all the different uniquenesses that come out of you uh, doing your ideal client. Okay, so with your ideal client, if you have, um, uh, and Carly loves treating kids uh, because it's at her stage of her life. Oh, beautiful. I look at you guys bringing up all these wonderful um, parts of the conversation. That's what I love about these conversations to consider. It's, um, it's something to consider. It might not be right for you, might not be wrong for you. And we can all uh, contribute to these conversations because we've all got different experiences as practitioners. So thank you guys for showing up for these. It's uh, really fun. So what Carly was saying is it's not my stage of my life. Now the other thing about your ideal client is often they do relate to the different stage of your life. So uh, when um, when it comes to Carly, I know um, she's got kids and she loves treating kids because that's where she's at. She's going to be doing it for herself and then she's going to be doing it for um, friends and family around her and things like that. So uh, your ideal client can change as you change. And so um, wherever you're at in your life's journey, that will impact the way that you are showing up as a practitioner and the types of people that you can help the best right now. So this isn't set in stone. Uh, so when we freak out about having to, oh, she's going to make me write this, you know, do this worksheet and it's going to be have to be concrete and I'm going to have to get it perfect and it's going to be the same forever. It's just not. Um, but you do have to sit down and get it done the first time. And trust me, I did, you know, two or three times it took me before I started to really actually feel connected to this whole um, ideal client avatar situation. Um, but do take the time to do it. It's really, really important and can, it can cut down on all the other crap that you end up getting so overwhelmed trying to keep on top of, like social media and newsletters and um, blog posts and vlog posts and turning up on a podcast and what you're going to talk about and um, what are you going to get interviewed for? What should I make an ebook about? Da, 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 da. If you've got your ideal client nailed and you know who you're here to help, all of that becomes really easy because then you're just having this one conversation to this one type of person. And if you're consistent with it for just, let's say, a year, then you're going to see different types of results coming in depending on who you've chosen. Cool. Um, okay. Uh, Mel loves to treat kids too. Georgina, not a baby or kid person either. Cool. I love that. Daisy, I love treating uh, perimenopausal and menopausal women, my stage of life. And there's no better person to actually help unless it, help these people when you're at that stage. Uh, I remember treating a, um, uh, a woman in when I was in student clinic. Oh, gosh. It was, I, I look back on it and just cringe so bad. I was in student clinic and uh, a second time mum came in with um, mastitis and my knowledge brain uh, just went, okay, it's a bacterial infection in your uh, mammary duct and this is what you need. Um, as karma would have it, I got mastitis three times uh, when I were, when I had my bub and um, and I remember how poorly I felt for this woman because I, I didn't provide her the type of care that she needed and she definitely wasn't my ideal client. Now, we're all going to have these things, but what it taught me was not everybody is for everybody and that the stage of your life does matter and your experiences uh, do shape how you can be of benefit at that point in time. And so uh, I ended up getting mastitis three times. And it's not just a bacterial infection. I wanted my mum. I wanted comfort food. I was like, it was all about support and a lack of support. There was a whole bunch of stuff other than one tiny little bacterial infection in your mammary gland. Uh, so your stage of life and your experience does help you connect with your ideal client. So, um, yeah. Just a little sideline there. Okay. Uh, Karen, totally hands up for kids as well. Um, homeopathy is great for kids too, isn't it, Karen? So you would know all about that. Um, so let's get 
to the gold. Let's get to um, the actual exercise itself. If you've downloaded the uh, the worksheet, then you will notice that there are a multitude of different things on the page. First, you have your ideal client in a girl shape because I don't do a business in the old school man's way and I'm not going to put a boy on the form. So it's a girl. And uh, it doesn't matter if you're treating men or women. I just like it there. So you can turn that person into whatever you want, the shape of that person on the inside there. But essentially what we're going to do is there's space for you to fill out different areas of their life. And you need to really, in this moment, connect with that person and step into their shoes. And if you are stepping into their shoes, the inside of their body, which is what's on the uh, on the worksheet, um, you're going to notice the internal goings on of their body. So just like Nick joined us and has just said uh, she tends to attract women with gut problems, then we're going to start writing some of the physical symptomology of the people that are showing up for you or that are your ideal client that you love to work with. So Katie was talking about hormones. Daisy was talking about her perimenopausal women. So inside that image, we're going to be writing down, okay, so what type of physical symptoms will we be getting with perimenopause? Okay, we're gonna be getting hot flushes, we're gonna get changes in sleep, and we're gonna pop that inside that person's shape, the shape of their body. We might have some joint pain if progesterone is getting a little low. We might have other bits and pieces that are coming up. So we're gonna really step into your ideal client and what's going on for them. Uh, if you're working with those stressed out mums, we're talking about um, adrenal glands, maybe giving that secondary um, effect of having a, a lower back pain. We might be talking about um, fatigue, can't concentrate, uh, focus in the afternoons, the lull in the afternoons. Might be heading towards having a few too many wines and coffees, so we might put a little shadow over the liver there. And uh, if we're talking about kids, we might be popping in ADHD or the alphabet disorders. We might be popping in focus, concentration. We might be popping in gut-related issues, maybe some atopic skin conditions. We're talking about the, the real nuts and bolts, physical stuff that might be showing up for these people. The reason we're doing that is because these are the conversations that these people will be having either in their own heads or with other people all the time. Uh, when it comes to uh, perimenopause, I know um, a lot of my friends are going through menopause at the moment too, is, you know, in their quiet moments, that's what they talk about. They go, oh, you know, I'm having one of those moments. You know, oh, one of those heat things have been coming up again. Oh, it's getting worse when, it's getting better when. Uh, now, if you have the um, stressed out, adrenally fatigued woman, they might be having a conversation uh, about being exhausted all the time. I'm so tired <laughs> right now. Uh, just like Mel popped in there before. So this, there is a different conversation going on for each of these ideal clients. And so when we're just looking at the physical, you want to have a consideration about how they're describing it. Now, we would say, oh, this is an adrenal fatigue client who is um, mid-30s to 40s, female, and um, has uh, fatigue at a level of 8 to 10 out of 10. Uh, so they're never, ever going to say, I have fatigue. They're always going to say, and it's because I've seen, you know, thousands of them, I'm exhausted all the time. Now, that exhaustion can range from 4 out of 10 energy to 10 out of, you know, uh, sorry, 1 out of 10 energy to say they hit the 7 out of 10 energy, but they still use the word exhausted. Now, this is the thing about stepping into your ideal client avatar's shoes is that you need to use the words they're using to describe what they've got going on. So uh, your hot flush ladies, they might have a different way of explaining the types of flushes that they're having, flashes, flushes, waves, all that kind of stuff. Cool, Karen, I'll catch you later. Um, so you have to be describing these things through their words, through the way that they are conveying the information 
uh, to their friends and family and how they'll actually say it to you or write it on your um, client intake form. Because if you were then able to create a blog post that says, um, are you exhausted all the time? Irrelevant of, uh, do you have a fatigue level that ranges between uh, 6 to 10 out of 10? Do, there is a difference. I'm not going to, you know, if I'm an adrenal fatigue woman, I'm not going to read that. I'm going to read, am I exhausted? Here's how, five steps to get um, out of exhaustion all the time. So it's a really specific thing to be able to nut in on what their physical um, self is doing. Now, if you've got the worksheet, you'll also notice that it has a big head. The reason it has a big head and a big fluffy cloud above it, I want you to cut the fluffy cloud in half. So the big thinking bubble that they have above their head, these are the thoughts that are recurring in their minds. Half of it is going to be the light side of the thoughts. Half of it is going to be the dark side of the thoughts. Let's start with the light side because I'm that kind of gal. I love a bit of optimism. The light side of their thoughts are going to be the aspirational stuff. The things that they look out to, you know, the things that they're like, oh, I would love to do blah, 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 blah. Now, my adrenaline fatigue client, I, um, and my suggestion is at the end of all of this, once you've nutted down all this yumminess, you actually give this avatar a name. Uh, that way, whenever you are thinking about writing a blog post, writing a newsletter, writing even a Facebook or social media um, uh post you are then speaking to that person so my uh, adrenal fatigue client her name was Allison and Allison had on one half of her mind you know the the stock photos of the woman sitting on the rock uh, with the um, the islands up in the background and she's in total meditative pose yeah who knows the stock photos like that she loves them if there is any of those appearing on her Instagram feed, if there's anything of those appearing on a, a flyer, she will pick that up. She will gobble it up because that's her aspiration. She would love to be sitting on a rock, nice and calm and quiet, away from her kids, by herself, and taking the time out to meditate. So that's the aspirational bit. Other words that she might look forward to are th things like what is her word of the year. Her word of the year might be um, easy, inspiration, um, me first, that kind of stuff. There might be um, words or creativity. There's these words that will jump out for your ideal client and Alison's were like that. So that's the aspirational bit. What's going to just rock her world? So um, your perimenopausal lady, her aspirational bit will, the things that will rock her world will be getting rid of the hot flushes, having an entire night where she doesn't soak the sheets. Um, the the, um, uh, the uh, kid with the alphabet disorders, their aspiration will be not to get in trouble that day at school or to um, be able to uh, finish complete a level on a computer game. So there's a whole bunch of different things that are going to be aspirational for different people and being able to step into their shoes and uh, be able to focus in on what's actually really aspirational to them, the thing that will actually guide them, move them forward towards something really exciting for them is going to be different. Then on the dark side of the fluffy cloud above the um, the image, is what keeps them up at 2 a.m. in the morning? What is the thing that wakes them up if they get up and at that time in the morning, they can't go back to sleep because the same things roll around in their heads? So my adrenaline fatigue woman, um, it, and it might not necessarily have to do with health, but it will impact their health. As we all know as practitioners, uh, everything impacts your health. And um, it doesn't matter which part of your life it's coming from, it's going to impact the way that uh, your body and your biochemistry deals with that. So my adrenal fatigue client, this is the thing, when I stepped into her shoes, it wasn't just, oh, gee, I'd love to not be exhausted every day. Um, at 2 a.m. she was waking up worried about the money. So she was worried about their, their house finances, whereas... Um, 
a male client, male ideal client, might be worried about being uh, providing for the kids, turning up as a dad, that kind of stuff. Mum is generally the, uh, the the particular uh, client that I'm talking about. She was generally waking up worrying about uh, finances and how the bills were going to get paid and things like that. And that obviously impacts on your adrenals because if we're worried about that, if we're waking up at 2 a.m., all those things. So what's the dark side of the stuff that's happening there? Perimenopausal women, you know, the thing that they may not talk about is uh, the vaginal uh, environment that we might be talking about dryness we might be talking about libido completely disappearing we might be actually thinking about am I going to stay with this person for the rest of my life it feels like I've been with them for the you know the first half already so there's other things that are going on and there's these darker thoughts that happen for uh, your ideal client being able to hone in on those is just as important as being able to hone in on the aspirational aspect of it So these types of things are going to be triggers and resistance and other things that come up when we're creating Any marketing we have to be aware that this conversation is going on for them as well and depending on what type of uh, Practitioner what type of message you want to get out you might want to actually start to hone in on that now Authenticity is a really big deal at the moment in uh, small business and marketing practices and if you are going to have a really authentic conversation about uh, This type of stuff it's very likely going to create an amazing conversation for your potential clients because it's some a conversation that probably a lot of people aren't brave enough don't have enough courage or don't even stop to think about for that particular client so um, it can be really beneficial to sit in that space as well so who here who's on the call can think of your ideal client like your main thing and a a 2 a.m. What's what's wakes them up at 2 a.m. for them? Who's listening? That's got and and just pop in my ideal client and then what's waking them up at 2 a.m. Now the thing about that is uh, we are seven times more likely to be moved by a pain point than we are by a pleasure point. So if you can just type into the comments section while I'm explaining this, um, uh, it'd be great to find out what if you've if you've stopped to think about the pain points for these clients. So um, you're we're, as humans, we are seven times more likely to move based on a pain point than we are to move based on a pleasure point. Um, Carla, on, uh, oncology during treatment for support and waking up with a fear of dying. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's a thing that they can't have a conversation with other people about because other people are already having that fear as well and they don't want to have that conversation with them. So it's a, a, a fantastic opportunity for a practitioner to be in the space of having that conversation. Um, even just opening up for a conversation, you don't have to have the solutions to it. Just to be able to have that conversation is an extraordinary thing to be able to give. Uh, Cindy, stress, pain, discomfort, and starting afresh tomorrow. Oh, yes. That tomorrow is a new day kind of moment. The stress um, people and the people who have chronic pain, they wake up in the, at that time of the night in their darkest moments going, I just want a new day tomorrow. Uh, Long-term migraine clients too, Cindy, I seem to ha have the uh, same kind of scenario. Uh, Nick, uh, worrying about not being able to eat whatever they want. Yep, will I uh, never resolve their diarrhea? Can't afford to see someone to fix it. Yeah, absolutely. So in those moments where they lose hope um, is one of those other spots. So um, the, the thing about that, Nick, uh, if you don't mind me just having a little nudge there is um, never be able to resolve their diarrhea now can you see how as practitioners we already see the world and explain the world in our practitioner way never be able to resolve di diarrhea so the way that our beautiful um, clients will describe that never never is a really big one that's a client thing to say never because never um, but resolve 
a client will never ever say resolve <laughs> they will always say fix never be able to fix the runs never be able to go from um, home to work without stopping at a loo on the way never be able to go out for dinner without knowing where the nearest toilet is can you see the difference between that like it's a nuance, but it's a really important nuance when it comes to trying to get your message to your client in marketing speak because it's, you have to be able to say it in their words and it's and it takes practice. Um, it's taken me a long time to be able to step into client shoes and, and speak client speak because it's taken us a long time to step into the shoes of a practitioner and, and speak practitioner language as well, especially when we're doing referrals to doctors and other people. So I totally get it, but if we if we're going to put on our little marketing hat and our small business hat, then we're going to have to step into the, their shoes and be able to speak it. Cool. So um, beautiful. Thank you for bringing that up, Nick. I hope you don't mind me using you as an example. Um, Grace, miscarriage, fear of not conceiving again. Yeah, again, um, the word conceiving isn't it easy for us to roll it off our tongue? Um, fear of not being able to fall pregnant again. Yeah. Um, fear of not being able to have children again. Yeah, I totally hear you, Grace. And um, I want to acknowledge Grace because she has the most amazing ebook specifically um, written in in this area, and it's beautiful. And being able to um, start that conversation with this part of that that person's mind um, and, and the conversation that they're having there is is uh, can be a thing that you really need to bring your own courage out and, and bravery to be able to do that. So, um, yeah, it's a wonderful space for people to be able to speak in, and, and Grace has a wonderful way of doing that. Um, Julia, a woman with hormonal imbalances, not being able to sleep, uh, thinking about relationship, totally, I'd agree with that. Uh, where I'm going to be in my life? Yeah, where am I going in my life? And you've got it in their words too, Julia. Well done. Uh, finances, yeah. Uh, how do I balance or juggle kids and work commitment tomorrow? How do I find the balance? Oh, I've heard that time and time again with clients in front of me. I, fantastic, Julia. Well done. Uh, Carla, totally agreeing. Um, just discussing fears can make such a difference as often people don't have any space or place in their personal relationships to discuss their fears. Yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, it those spaces and places for me um, uh, to be able to have those conversations, they are for me the most rewarding ones. They um, there is a level of connection that you can get um, that I just haven't experienced another way, you know. Uh, and it, and again, it does take a lot of courage and bravery to be able to, to stand in that space and hold that space for a person while they're ex expressing that. So, um, uh, and again, in the marketing world, being able to even have uh, an image on Instagram that that just addresses that fear um, or opens up a conversation to be had about that. Um, that's what marketing is actually about and that's what the new Facebook algorithm is about and I know it seems weird and that we're manipulating that but they if they can't have that conversation with their family and I've done it too right there's been a Facebook post that I probably haven't brought up a conversation with my husband about right and I read the Facebook post and go oh my goodness they put it in such good words or oh my goodness this person's experience hits me hard enough and they've told a story enough that I'm going to share it with my husband and I can have a conversation with him based on the experience that is written in that post so you might have done that too and that's the point of being able to get across um, the a, a story that's happened to you or a story that's happened to your ideal client where your ideal client reads it and then shares it and is able to have a conversation that they might not have been able to have before and then it's very likely that they're moved enough to come and see you as well so, um, Charlene, my ideal client fatigue, adrenals, wakes up at 2 p.m. <laughs> um, but waking up at 2 a.m., she probably does wake up at 2 p.m. after having an afternoon nap, but um, stressed, not well, worried about health, family, um, and getting everything done. Yeah, a lot of adrenal peeps. How do I get it all done? So overwhelming. Overwhelm is another good word for anyone who's got adrenal peeps. Um, yes, Nick, 
the word fix all the way. Uh, Mel, mothers with anxiety and fatigue, uh, when young children wake or become restless at night, causing anxiety for the mum and thinking that she'll have to go through that another day with no sleep. Oh, yeah, definitely. And again, if you think about the nuances of the way she thinks about those words, um, I bet she uses some different words to describe having to get up to her kids, <laughs> especially on a lack of sleep. Been there, done that. All right, so, so that is the physical that is the mental and then what we're talking about is there is a heart space on one side of your picture and this big beautiful heart space is um what they would love like we talked about the secrets of secrets of the dark side but what would they totally love now this love bubble that's uh on the worksheet um it came about because when I was seeing clients, what I would notice is that, and you might notice this too, is that when they, they've told this story, they've got all their story out, they've told you all their symptoms, all their past history, they've talked about their medical stuff, they've talked about their relationships, they've talked about everything. And then there's this little moment where they go, oh, if I could just get like two weeks to myself. Uh, on a tropical island where nobody could get in contact with me. I'd be fine. Okay, so um, what do I need to do to fix up um, my ongoing lung condition and my uh, exhaustion? So you know the little bit where they go, oh, if I could just get, if I could just go and have a massage and a facial like once a month, I just feel so much better. You know that bit? It's like this throwaway line. But somehow it's like their soul is coming out because they've got rid of everything else. They've been able to tell this story. They've been able to da, 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 da. And all of a sudden they're so exhausted by what they've said that their soul has a little moment or their heart has a little moment to pop out and tell you what they really need. And then they just shove it away because their brain says, no, no, that's not realistic. That love, that is the thing that their heart wants. Their heart wants a day off where nobody talks to them. Their heart wants um, to get together with their friends from 10 years ago and just relive their experience. Their heart wants that round the world trip that they've been putting off until their retirement. Their heart wants um, the to have a whole day pain free or have a whole day in um, the pool because that's where they've got the least amount of pain. Um, their heart wants a whole day um, without their, their phone. They might want a whole week away. Whatever that is, that needs to go into their heart. <laughs> Who's noticed something like that with their clients? That thing that, um, do you find it fascinating? There's this thing that, and, and I mean, that happens with us too, by the way. As practitioners, we go, oh, yes, yes, I've noticed it in them. Oh, yeah, that's right, I do that too. <laughs> um, and it's very likely that you're having moments of that too, you know. I'm so overwhelmed with my business. I'm so overwhelmed with stuff. Um, if I could only just get a person to help me out, if I could just get a receptionist, if I could just get a VA to do all of that. <laughs> okay, now I'm sidetracking again. But it's an important lesson. Listen to your heart. Your uh, client, yes, I would love a holiday. Louise, come on the retreat. We get to do that. Uh, so um, your client has a heart space thing as well. So what is her thing or his thing or the kid's thing? What is that little thing that in actual fact deep down they really, really need that, right? So what is that thing? What's that thing they would totally love? Now, speaking to that, although it doesn't shift as much as the, the pain point does, like I said, we're seven times more likely to shift because um, we've got a pin up our bottom than we are to um, have a carrot in front of us. Uh, we still need to know what that carrot is. 
you still need to know that they are moved by travel or they move by financial um, rewards or they're moved by um, loving their time in a hydrotherapy pool or they're moved by um, getting someone to help or even, you know, do the washing cleaning, um, you know, they if I could just get an in-house chef. I remember one client said, oh, here I go on a tangent again. I remember one client said, I just want an in-house chef. And then we found out that there's a local um, place that's a lot like HelloFresh, but they do all of the dinners. And so it was only her and her partner. And so they just started ordering them Monday to Friday. So she didn't actually have to do all that cooking and she created a space in her life for looking after her health and her well-being and her adrenal um, stress came down. Anyway, there's something there. What's in the heart? Take some time, step in your ideal client avatar shoes, and think about what's in their heart. Okay, then um, here's the ones that are a little bit more tricky. So on the other side of your uh, ideal client worksheet, there is also a big square rectangle, which is actually a door. Now, I, it is a door of where they have come from to get to you. Where they've come from to get to you. So where is it that they've come from? Uh, now, what happens usually is that um, we don't bother to check in the beginning. We kind of go, oh, you know, uh, it's word of mouth. Oh, you know, maybe they're coming from. But if we stop and take the time to step into our ideal client's shoes, where would they have been before they come to a naturopath to help with their particular condition. And I'm talking specifics now. So for your um, perimenopausal lady, she will have gone to see her friends. She would have talked about it. She would have maybe talked to um, family members. She would have gone and Googled it maybe. Maybe she doesn't like Google and she talked to the ladies at the Lions Club about it or Rotary. Uh, she might have gone and seen an endocrinologist or a gynecologist. She might have um, come through it surgically because she's had a history of um, oncology issues, whatever, those types of things. And we need to know, oh, we need to know which particular, um, which particular one it is in your area that they've gone and seen. So if it's a particular endocrinologist, Dr. Smith, only Dr. Smith, the female Dr. Smith, that's the only one that I, you know, that you, you really juiced up about because she's the one that would would send them to go and see you. Maybe she has been at a um, curves at the personal training um, boot camp that has, you know, um, 30s to 60 year old women at it. So the specifics about where she was first and then what was she looking for? How did she find you on the internet? Or how did she find you in general? Was she at the local IGA and there was a big um, board there and you happened to be there? Were you at the markets and she came and saw you and you had your pamphlets there? Um, are your pamphlets at her hairdressers or her beauticians that she goes and sees every week? How did she find you? And when she got online, if she got online, uh, was it part of a Facebook group? Was she part of a Facebook group? Uh, she, does she look at Instagram? Um, what type of Facebook groups is she interested in? Does she just listen and watch or does she actually engage? Uh, is she searching on Google or does she love to watch YouTube clips on stuff? Now, this is one for you guys who are interested in mental health. Um, mental health, people are usually online late at night looking at YouTube videos. Um, well, there's a big proportion anyway. There's a bit of research around that. So where where has your person looked before they've found you? And the cool thing about that is you have to step into their shoes to do it. Like you've really got to use your imagination and creativity here. So you go step into their shoes and then you've got to go, okay, well, she's on the local buy, swap and sell, um, sell site and she, you know, usually gets her help from Gumtree and she usually does this other stuff. And then um, she loves Pinterest and uh, puts together little collages of all the little um, things that she does at home, the um, improvements around the house. You can tell I'm not this person. And, um, you know, 
And then she talks to the school mums out the front of the school and um, goes to the PNF meetings and um, she probably talked to so-and-so. So, um, and she listens to podcasts while she's waiting in the car for her kids, right? Can you see there's a difference between that person and the perimenopausal person um, or your mental health people because some people are going to be listening to podcasts they prefer to. Some people are going to be watching YouTube videos because they prefer to. Um, some are going to go and see the specialist straight away. Some, that will be the last thing they do and they just want to go to the health health food shop to get their, their help first. Uh, some are going to see the local doctor and they're just going to be a stream of people coming to you from the local doctor. Some are really interested in boot camps and things like that. Some want the local gym. So where has your person been? Where have they been looking? What have they been eating? Restaurants are a really good one. Cafes are a really good one. Where have they been eating? What have they been searching for? How do I get more energy? Um, how to stop hot flushes? Uh, um, what is life balance? You know, what have they been searching for? All of that goes into the door to lead into you. And if you know these things about that person, guess what? You only have to appear in those spaces. You don't have to do podcasts and YouTube and this and that and the other. You just do the things that they really, really are attracted to. So if you're helping burnt out, adrenaline fatigued business women, get on every podcast that you can get on to. If you're helping uh, anxiety-related um, conditions, um, mental health conditions, create a YouTube channel. If you're helping um, uh, stressed out mums who love to do craft, hop on Pinterest and pop your blog posts on Pinterest. Uh, so where your person is, just find that one spot first and then go for that. Don't get overwhelmed with everything that they're interested in. Try, try, find that one spot. Now, if uh, online you're still just getting used to it, find that referral partner to go to. Just go and see that one endocrinologist. Yes, it's scary. Yes, you're freaking out about it. I can feel it. I can feel it. Go and see the endocrinologist. Yeah, go and see them. They're a human being too and they have... Um, I want and a need to help people the same as you want and need to help people as well. And so just find those spaces and places and you never know what can happen when you put that energy in there. It'll, it'll create the doorway backwards to your ideal client coming to seeing you. Cool. Uh, if that's not for you and you're still freaking out and you just want to write a blog post or a newsletter, then write it based on these particular things that they might have been searching for, the things that they look up, things that they love, the things that they hit the like button on Facebook or Instagram for. Mimic it so that they can find you. Got it? All right. Last one is on the um, on your worksheet, uh, I've got three whole minutes. <laughs> on the worksheet just below your um, ideal client, she's standing on um, a, a soapbox. She's standing on a soapbox. Now, um, that soapbox, it's an old school term. I kind of like it though. Um, she's standing on a soapbox. There is something that she will be very vocal about when you tell her to do something. And that soapbox is going to be the box, box of objections essentially. And you really need to know this in your marketing so that you can overcome the objections straight away. You can address what she's worried about straight away so that then she can come and see you. The soapbox kind of sounds like this. Okay, so um, I really want you to uh, take the dog for a walk every afternoon at three o'clock. Well, no, I've got children. I've got to do the school run then. Okay. Um, I really would love if you could invest one hour a week doing something that you enjoy. Now, this used to be standard on my green scripts for people, for my adrenal fatigued um, mums, one hour a week doing something that you enjoy. You feel joy while you're in it. Oh, well, it can't be on a Tuesday and it can't be on a Thursday and I can't do it on a Saturday and Sunday's my prep day. That's the soapbox. It'll be the objection that comes up when you are bringing forth a new idea, either a treatment or that kind of thing, or it'll be for an objection for them to book in with you. Oh, well, I can't do it on a Saturday. I've got kids' uh, school sport. Sorry, out, out of school sport. 
oh, well, I can't come on a Thursday uh, evening because oh, I can't come on a Friday morning because, no, you can't make me eat meat. I'm vegan. No, I won't take that apis homeopathic because that there is a possibility there's an energetic bee in it. You know, there's something, there's a soapbox, there is something that they stand for and you have to address that uh, through your marketing, through your, um, and through consult as well. There's a soapbox that you have to address first and find ways that that's workable instead of it being unworkable and a blockage for them to either come see you, come pay for things, uh, follow up your treatment plan, any of those things. But it's really important to come into that first because then you're able to uh, overcome those before it even becomes an issue. It doesn't have to become an issue because you already stopped to think about that for that person. So being able to say to somebody in a sentence instead of, can you find one hour a week doing something you enjoy? Can you find one hour a week Outside of the time that the kids have their things, think about it. What hour in the week do you have with the 160 odd that you have? Where's an hour that you just have it to yourself where somebody else can look after the kids, hubby's home, whatever it is? That, that one hour? Okay, you have to find something you enjoy in that hour. See that? Now that's just a treatment one. Now if we're talking about your marketing, uh, I don't call people on my mobile phone. I don't call mobile phones from home. I don't like to pay for things online. Would be um, uh, elderly population. I don't want to put my credit card in. Okay. Um, I want to book that. I want to book straight away, and I want to be able to pay with one click. Now that's me. I'm like, scroll, 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 scroll. This looks amazing. I love it. Oh, there's no way of paying. Oh, well, and then I forget about it. So maybe that is for your client as well. Maybe it's one click wonder. Maybe she's thinking about this stuff at 2 a.m. and she's scrolling through whatever social media, whatever website, whatever it is. She comes to yours and goes, oh, it'd be so good to book in with her. Oh, there's no way to book in with her. I've got a call. I won't remember that in the morning. So where's the objections that she's standing on going, well, I want to do it now while I think about it especially for the overwhelmed um, people who are trying to find balance and that kind of stuff. They're going to be like, I need to do it now. Um, where? What about the people that are, um, you know, they're up at 2 a.m. with finance issues and you've got a way of being able, them being able to pay for a program and they can pay it weekly rather than on every visit. And they go, you overcome the objections straight away. So what's her stand, what's her soapbox or oh, his soapbox? What's, what's your ideal client avatar's soapbox? And they stand on it and, and, and it literally goes and you're back down to ground level and you're talking to one another because you have addressed that and you've taken the time to think about what that is for them first before they even have to worry about it. Cool. Um, what's the other ones? Uh, oh, and their soapbox. So the other thing, you know, if you, if your ideal client is vegan, then are you popping up recipes on your, um, on your Facebook page, on your other, that have vegan options? Or are you popping up, um, articles that are around uh, and about that information? Are you sharing other people's advice about that stuff and your standpoint on that and being able to share and acknowledge that, that that's where things are at for you? So, um, what is it for you with your ideal client that you can step into their shoes and start to notice these things? So if you haven't downloaded it yet, it's at tamiguest.com backslash ideal dash client. And I want you this week, there's always an actionable step at the end of this webinar. I want you this week to actually take the time to print that out with a pen and a paper. Because something happens with this neural pathway that we have created as human beings to be able to write, um, be able to get that down and do the work to actually connect with one of your ideal clients. It doesn't have to be the one and only. It's okay. You can have a couple, but you're not helping the whole world. So connect with one of your ideal clients and fill those spaces out. Um, this is recorded. You get, if you're in the hub, you've got access to this at any point in time under training Thursday and uh, if you are in the webinars this is recorded for you and it'll be in your inbox forever as well so uh, write it out take the time to connect 
and really start to notice where you could be having these conversations either on your blog, as a Facebook post, as a series, maybe it's a five day challenge, maybe it's a um, recipe of the week, maybe it is, um, but uh, maybe it is an Instagram post, maybe it is an ebook that you start to create. Maybe it is articles you're writing for other people. Maybe you're appearing in somebody's podcast. Maybe you're creating some videos or doing some Facebook lives to bust through that algorithm. But you're having this conversation. You're starting to have this conversation with your ideal client so that they can finally get to know, like, and trust you and go, oh, this is the person for me and I need to go and see her or him. So uh, hopefully this has been beneficial. And uh, next week we are going to, or I'm aiming to have a chat about the new Facebook algorithm, how that works. And uh, we've got a special uh, person to come along and have a chat about that. So um, yeah, hopefully this has been beneficial to you uh, or somebody else you might know. Tag them if you uh, have noticed that somebody didn't get to see it. And um, take the time, connect with your ideal client. It can be a total game changer. It has for me. Um, being a game changer, I wouldn't have launched my book had I have not understood this. I wouldn't have uh, created video series without this that then led to, you know, doubling my newsletter list. I've, there's so many things that this has been beneficial for and particularly as I've moved into different areas of practice or I've moved into different areas of business, honing in on this, total game changer. It just It creates a conversation before you even have a conversation. And um, it creates a relationship and a rapport before you even have to do that. People think that they know, like, and trust you before you actually meet them in person. Then you meet them in person and they're the right person for you to meet in person. So uh, hopefully it's been beneficial. Please take the time. And uh, thank you guys for listening and taking the time out to work on your business and um, not in it. All right. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.